Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 15th House District, Representative Matt Gamble. Representative Gamble. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. It's an honor to stand before you today and introduce my pastor, uh, Dr. Patrick Latham from Tabernacle Baptist Church. Pa uh, pastor Latham is fairly new to us. He started in January, uh, so my heart goes out to any minister that changes churches right in the middle of what we've just come through with the COVID uh, pandemic. He has previously pastored in Cedartown, uh, Georgia, and in Lawton, Oklahoma. He and his wife, Laura Price Latham, are both originally from Marietta, Georgia. Patrick is a graduate of Walton High School in Cobb County, Gordon State College in Barnesville, and the University of Oklahoma, and also New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. Together, he and his wife have three children, Julianne, Will, and Levi, and Patrick considers it his life purpose to help connect with their ultimate purpose in life through Jesus Christ. Would you welcome Pastor Patrick Latham? Thank you to Speaker Ralston, and thank you to my representative, Matthew Gamble, and thank you to the members of this distinguished body for the opportunity uh, to stand before you this morning. I want to share with you briefly on the subject of compassion, the need of the hour. Uh, considering the different crises within our nation, it seems that compassion, empathy, sympathy towards one another, our fellow Georgians, our fellow Americans, is perhaps the greatest need of our time. Love and understanding seems to be what's required. Sergeant Shriver, the first director of the Peace Corps, once said if American society could fully embrace this virtue we call love, it would be as if humanity discovered the usefulness of fire for a second time. Indeed, Compassionate regard for one another uh, can greatly benefit us. The question we face is how can we have hearts that are full of such compassion, empathy, and sympathy? Is there any way for us to improve our human condition? Unfortunately, we have help and an example in the person of Jesus. In Mark 6.34 uh, we read in an occasion in his ministry, and shortly after, Scripture describes an interaction with King Herod, the king of Judea at that time. It says Jesus went to travel with his closest followers, and he cut across the northern portion of the Sea of Galilee to find a place of rest. And when he went ashore, he saw a large crowd, and Jesus had compassion on them. For they were like sheep in his eyes, without a shepherd. Then he began to teach them many things. Jesus approached the seashore, and he saw a green grass ascending up into the hillside, and people wanting to catch a glimpse of Jesus and to hear him teach uh, rushed down that seashore in their customary white Garb And in Jesus' eyes, they literally looked like sheep on the pasture side, but they figuratively looked like sheep as well. Jesus knew that the people needed a shepherd. He was well aware of Herod, who had been mentioned previously, and Herod's ruthless reign, his greed, his murderous behavior, his lust-driven and unjust lifestyle that is well spoken of in history. And so Jesus had compassion. The Greek language of the New Testament, the Koine Greek, the common Greek spread by Alexander, uses a strong word from the first century here. It's a word that speaks of the human bowels or the human intestines. It speaks of that type of emotion for another where you are moved on the inside. I can remember when I met my wife, we met at Shillings on the Square in Marietta, Georgia, and she would come in to visit sometimes at my lunch hour. I was a, a waiter there, and she would come in to get her lunch, and 
Uh, many times as she entered that restaurant, I would see her in the busyness of serving meals, and as I saw her, I got butterflies in my stomach. The Greeks were well aware that emotion seemed to impact us on the inside. And so here, the New Testament uses this word of a deep, visceral feeling for the condition of another person. And it alludes to displays of sympathy and empathy. This word speaks of more than just concern for another person. It portrays a concern for another person that leads one to take action on behalf of that person. We see Jesus here had that compassion. He embodies the virtues of an ultimate leader. The Torah had used this picture to speak of the type of leadership that God's people needs in Numbers 27, 17, and Christ embodied this compassion, and he stands today as an example for us. He reminds us that we can all benefit ourselves, our families, our communities, our, na our state, our nation by embracing this type of compassion. May we learn to look at our fellow citizens through the lens of love. Though we may never agree ideologically or politically or economically on every issue, we can still seek to grow in our displays of empathy, sympathy, and compassion. If we can learn to take the proverbial walk in our fellow countrymen's shoes, we might be able to reach agreements and embody changes that will help us survive and thrive as a society. When compassion becomes the gold standard for our beliefs and behaviors, we can work together to form a better future for our loved ones our communities, and our nation. And take note that Scripture also teaches Jesus is not just an example in this regard. He is an empowerment and an enablement as well. We may feel that of ourselves we can't muster up the compassion we need, but Scripture teaches us in Romans 5.5 5, that God's love can be poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given through Christ Jesus. So if we feel ill-equipped to show compassion and concern to others, may we humble ourselves, pray, and seek the person of Jesus. He can transform us spiritually. He can give us the perspective of love, patience, and forgiveness we need. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, during these turbulent times, help us to heed the example of Jesus, help us to remember his great words that have echoed throughout the ages. This is my command, love one another as I have loved you. Work in our hearts and minds to give us greater compassion for one another and use such love and compassion to bless the residents of Georgia and to make us into the people you want us to be. In Christ's name I pray, amen.